Are we just going to give up? Or going to be brave and fight for the things we believe in? And welcome to Let's Ask Shogo. If there is a movie related to samurai history and culture that is famous as The Last Samurai, it is surely the 47 Ronin. However, the story of the movie itself was completely fictional, and only the framework was based on facts. So there are many people asking me, what was the story of the 47 Ronin actually like? So today, as a katana trainee studying about samurai history every day, I will briefly explain the story of the 47 Ronin by breaking it down into three points. One, the incident and seppuku of their lord. Two, preparation to attack. Three, their revenge. As the purpose of this video is for you to get the big picture of this event, I will try my best to keep the explanations as simple as possible, so it won't be difficult to understand. Also, at the end of the video, I will talk about why this story is so famous in Japan and was cherished and idealized by the samurai. And even if you get confused or during the story, that's okay. I will wrap everything up again at the end of the video in today's conclusion. So, let's go to One, the incident and seppuku of their lord. I will start from talking about the event that caused the 47 Ronin incident in the first place. But again, to keep the story simple and to avoid confusion, I will only have the three most important names appear today. One, Asano, the lord of the 47 Ronin. Two, Kira, the enemy of the 47 Ronin. 3. Oishi, a vassal of Asano, and a leader who led the 47 Ronin incident. Every New Year's season, there was an important ceremony where the shogun and the emperor would send each other messengers to say their greetings. Powerful samurai leaders from all over Japan were gathered and given jobs for the ceremony. In the year 1701, the man responsible for running these ceremonies was Kira. Asano was responsible for feeding the messengers sent by the emperor because he was a lower rank than Kira. When the series of rituals were just about to end, a terrifying and unexpected event happened. Asano suddenly drew his sword and cut Kira's forehead and back who was talking with someone in the hallways of the Edo castle. People who heard the painful screams of Kira rushed to stop Asano, and Asano failed to completely end the life of Kira. The shogun was in rage that Asano started such an incident during one of the most important ceremonies of the year in the middle of his castle. Using a katana in my castle on such an important day I want Asano dead now. He sentenced Asano to seppuku right on that day. And just a few hours after the event, Asano was dead. The Ako clan, of which Asano was the lord, was dissembled, and all of their property were decided to be taken away by the shogunate. All of the men who were waiting for the return of their lord back in Ako were no longer samurai. On the other hand, Kira was not accused of anything, and he was told to rest to cure his injuries. Why would Asano suddenly attack Kira, who was at a higher rank during the ceremony? Asano should have known that causing such an incident would damage his and his clan's honor, and would risk the lives of all of his subordinates, right? This is the part of the story that still remains a mystery, but there are two things that we can try to guess the reason from. One, what Asano said as he attacked Kira. Two, the bad rumors about Kira. It is believed that when Asano cut Kira, he yelled, This is for the grudge from that 
day. What grudge did Asano have towards Kira? Again, Kira was the one responsible for running the ceremony at the castle, and Asano was there to support him in order to defeat the messengers. But there was a diary left after this incident, and it was written that Kira was famous for being an arrogant person, and that he wouldn't teach the necessary things for the ceremony unless you pay money to him. It seems that Asano was not satisfied with this, and he rejected Kira's order to pay him to teach him to do his job. There are people who speculate that the grudge from that day might have been a day when Asano was embarrassed because he didn't know how to properly do something during the ceremony. However, again, this is just one speculation, and there are others who say that it was because Asano was insulted by Kira during the ritual in front of others. There was nothing wrong with Kira, but it was all Asano's fault. The only thing we know for sure is that Asano suddenly attacked Kira during an important ceremony in the middle of the shogun's castle, and that he was sentenced to seppuku because of it. The samurai of the Akko clan were very dissatisfied with the shogun's decision to sentence their lord to seppuku, but not accuse Kira for anything. This is especially because during the Edo period, it was a rule that if two samurai fought each other, regardless of who attacked first, they must be sentenced to the same punishment to be fair. Even if it was their lord Asano that attacked Kira, there must have been an inevitable reason that made him do it, which is equivalent to the crime that Asano has committed. However, there were two problems. One, Kira did not draw his sword when he was attacked. Two, the incident happened during an important ceremony, and the shogun was angry. Because Kira did not try to fight back with his sword, this event was not regarded as a fight between two samurai, but just an unfair assault. Also, usually these problems will take more time for the officials to process. But in this case, the shogun was in fury and made the decision on his own without doing enough investigation. So there were actually many other samurai in the shogunate who were against the sudden decision to sentence Asano to seppuku. 2. Preparation to attack With their lord, Asano gone, his most powerful subordinate, Oishi, was responsible for making decisions for the people of Akko. The people of Akko were all confused and dissatisfied with the situation, and everything was going out of control. We cannot let them take our castle. We should all defend it. No, we should commit seppuku like our lord did to state our last will to the shogun. You cowards! We should attack Kira's mansion right away and take his head. Oishi declined all of these opinions because he was hoping that possibly they were able to re-establish their clan under Asano's younger brother. The government was still deciding the punishment for the younger brother, and Oishi knew that if the Akko samurai caused any more trouble, their clan would be over for good. By the way, Asano's younger brother was of course not involved in the incident at all, but it was a rule that the men of family members would also have to take responsibility and accept punishments. The Akko clan handed over their castles and property as scheduled, and Oishi begged the men that came from the shogunate to let Asano's younger brother to continue working as a samurai. However, after a year and a half long of living as a ronin, and persuading his men to not attack Kira, all of his efforts became worthless. The government had decided to demote Asano's younger brother, which meant he no longer had his rights as a samurai, and the last hope to re-establish her clan was gone. Oishi gathers the foremost samurai of the Akko clan to a meeting, and he finally tells them that it's time to take their revenge. However, out of 120 of the men who gathered to this meeting, 
About half of them were disappointed with Oishi's decision and left him completely. They were hoping that Oishi would continue to seek a peaceful solution. Oishi was very shocked about this because some of those who left were a few of his closest friends. He thought that he needed to confirm the strength of determination of the men who were left to take revenge with him. Oishi asked everyone to write a pledge sealed with blood to prove their readiness to fight. However, a few days later, these papers were soon returned to the men by Oishi's subordinates. We are sorry, but we cannot accept your pledge. Oishi has decided to quit the plan of revenge and quietly live with his wife and kids. There were two kinds of reactions to this. Okay, if that is Oishi's true wish, I will have to accept it. What? Oishi has broken his promise and has betrayed us. Who cares about him? I will go on my own to fight. The men of the first kind were not told anything and were excluded from the list. But the second kind were told the truth. Wait, this was a test to confirm your will. Please, Oishi needs you. In the end, the 120 men that gathered at the meeting were down to about 50 people at this point. 3. Their Revenge Oishi and his men moved to the city of Edo where Kira's mansion was located and they started to live in 15 different places. They all changed their names and disguised themselves as doctors, sword instructors, or merchants, and tried to gather as much information as they could. One of the men who was training in tea ceremony became an apprentice of a master in the area, and he found out that there is going to be a tea ceremony held at the mansion of Kira on December 14th. They chose this night for the attack, after about two years after the death of their lord. The night before, the 47 ronin exchanged their farewell cup and pledged that they will fight as one until their long-cherished wish is achieved. We 47 warriors are one samurai fighting to show our existence this world. We shall fight and die together. The next day, late at night, the 47 Ronin broke into Kira's mansion, succeeded in taking Kira's head, and accomplished their goal. What was amazing about this whole incident was that none of the 47 men were killed, although there was an hour-long fierce battle between the 100 guards of the mansion. They took the head of Kira to their lord's grave and reported that they have remorsed him. Oishi and his men went to the government themselves to inform them of the incident. They were all ready to accept any punishments from the government, and no one was planning on running away. This was to prove that they were not just criminals, but were samurai who were fighting for their justice. The shogun was impressed by their bravery and loyalty, so it was decided that they will be able to have the honor to commit seppuku. The men were all separately taken to different mansions, and they each ended their own lives with dignity. Their graves were built in the same temple where their lord lays, and even a temple gate was built to mourn their souls. Then what happened to the Kira family? Kira's son, who was already the leader of the family, had to take the responsibility to let a group of ronin into their mansion, and was sent out of the capital Edo to be confined in a castle. He eventually became sick from the uncomfortable life there, and the Kira family died out completely. So, in a way, finally the punishment between the Ako Samurai and the Kira family became fair. These rumors of the 47 Ronin spread immediately throughout Japan as a story of heroes, and many people praised their loyalty and bravery. Just 12 days after the incident, there was already a kabuki play performed about them, which is one of the most famous stories in Japan even today. Now that you've understood the story, let's talk about why this story is so important and well known among the Japanese. 
While of course there is no absolute answer to this, from studying about 47 Ronin, I summarized the most supported reasons into three points. One, their loyalty. Two, their bravery to fight for what they believe. Three, their humane character. One, their loyalty. First of all, Japanese people love stories of loyalty, where warriors fight to protect their lord and their honor. Another story that is loved as much as the 47 Ronin is surely the story of Shinsengumi, who also fought in battles that they knew they couldn't win before their loyalty to the shogunate. But why is loyalty so important among Japanese? One way to explain is that the Edo shogunate imported Confucianism to control the people. The famous Bushido we know of today is made of three religions, Shintoism, Buddhism, and Confucianism. But the third, Confucianism, gave the samurais the five virtues. Benevolence, justice, courtesy, wisdom, and sincerity. The samurai government used these teachings to create the idea of honor and loyalty is the most important thing. You must always obey your superiors. Although this was taught among the samurai, the commoners admired the samurai and their bushido, so it was widely believed among everyone too. So we can say that the political measures the Edo shogunate took for more than two centuries still lives among Japanese people as virtues. 2. Their bravery to fight for what they believe. Life is always unfair and irrational from past to present, and for every single person on this planet, including you and me. Sometimes terrible things happen to us, even though we have no clue what we did wrong, and there is no way to avoid it. But what we can change is our attitude and actions towards these irrational events. Are we just going to give up, or going to be brave and fight for the things we believe in? The 47 Ronin chose the latter option, and they selected the path to dedicate their lives into trying to fight with this unfair world, which is an attitude that many people admire. Of course, today is a very different era, and I believe that killing someone, no matter what kind of reason you have, is not a good choice. But at the same time, I think that there's something that we can all learn from their brave and serious attitudes. 3. Their humane character. When you heard this whole story, what did you think? Did you think that they were heroes that fought to remorse their lord's soul no matter what it took? Or did they look more like criminals that killed an innocent man? To be honest, I was very surprised when I first read the stories of the 47 Ronin because they tried to kill Kira even though they didn't know what the reason was. Their lord attacked him in the first place. Maybe their lord could have just gone mad and suddenly did something crazy, right? No one knows the truth. However, many say that this is another good part of the story, that they are mere humans and that they are not perfect at all. Their reasons to attack Kira was completely personal and not logical nor peaceful at all. But because of their humane characteristics, people are able to relate to them more and feel compassion for them. So in other words, I think that the men who left Oishi and did not join the 47 Ronin were not bad people either. They too did what they believed was right. Then lastly, today's conclusion. The story of the 47 Ronin can be broken down into three points. One, the incident and seppuku of their lord. In 1701, the lord of the 47 Ronin and the Ako clan, Asano, suddenly attacked Kira, who was responsible for the very important ceremony that was taking place inside the Edo castle. The reason why Asano tried to kill Kira is left a mystery. Regardless of this, the shogun sentenced Asano to seppuku, and the Ako clan was disassembled. The samurai of the Ako clan was very unsatisfied that although their lord was ordered to die, 
Kira was not convicted of anything, which was thought of as a very unfair decision. 2. Preparation to attack Asano's most powerful subordinate, Oishi, was now responsible for taking care of the people of Ako. He persuaded the man who wanted to go and attack Kira right away to not do so, because he was hoping that he could possibly re-establish their clan under Asano's younger brother peacefully. However, after a year and a half, the government decided to take away the younger brother's rights as a samurai, and all hope was lost. Oishi finally decided to take revenge for their lord, and the 40 Samurai Ronin moved to Edo and started to gather information. 3. Their Revenge They found out that there will be a ceremony held in Kira's mansion, and they succeeded in breaking in at night. They took Kira's head to their lord's grave and reported about the incident to the government themselves. The shogun was quite impressed with their bravery and loyalty, and it was decided that the 40 Samurai Ronin can have an honorable death of committing seppuku. Kira's family died out after his son became sick during confinement, and finally the punishment between the Ako Samurai and Kira family became fair. These rumors of the 40 Samurai Ronin spread immediately throughout Japan as a story of heroes, and many people praised their loyalty and bravery. The three main reasons that many people point out as reasons why the story of the 40 Samurai Ronin are so popular are 1. Their loyalty Through the teachings of Confucianism, there is a virtue in Japan believing that honor and loyalty is the most important thing and you always must obey your superiors. 2. Their bravery to fight for what they believe. Life is always irrational, but the 47 Ronin selected the path to dedicate their lives into trying to fight with this unfair world, which is an attitude that many people admire. 3. Their humane character. The reasons that the 47 Ronin had to attack Kira was completely personal and not logical nor peaceful at all. But because of their humane characters, people are able to relate to them more and feel compassion for them. So that's it for today. Thank you very much for watching. If this video made you want to watch the movie 47 Ronin again, please hit the like button to let me know. And my goal is to achieve 1 million subscribers by January 2023, so your help is what I need. In this channel, you can take a closer look at Japanese traditional culture, tips on travel in Kyoto, and social problems in Japan. So learners and lovers of Japanese language and culture, be sure to subscribe to enjoy more content. And if you'd like to learn more about today's topic, please take a look at my sub-channel, Shogo's Podcast, through the link in the description box. I would like to talk about which part of the story of 40 Sound Ronin that amazed me the most. Thanks again, and I'll see you in my next video. Domo, arigatou gozaimashita!